When it's springtime, I like to take out a sports car. And there's no better fundamental sports car to really enjoy yourself than the Toyota 86. Under $30,000, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, it's balanced, it's everything that a car should be without being overpowered and crazy and just way too expensive. There aren't many cars like this anymore. So I'm gonna enjoy myself today on some coastal New England roads up in New Hampshire. So come with me, let's enjoy it together. For the last decade, the Toyota GR86 has been a rare type of vehicle. From a mainstream automaker, you get a rear wheel drive manual transmission sports car. A true sports car not based on anything else. Toyota and Subaru co-developed the car just as they did in the first generation when it came out as a Scion, the FRS, for 2013. Now, 10 years later, the GR86, even though it's gone through a different name, is very much the same car, only better. The 86 is one of the shortest cars on sale, but it's also more than a foot longer than a Mazda Miata. So put that into perspective. It's a little larger and longer than the previous generation, but it's compact, has all the right dimensions, a short tail, a nice long and tapered hood here right on the nose. This is the premium trim, so it has the larger 18 inch wheels versus the standard 17s and what Toyota calls a duck bill spoiler. It's a pretty big flap on the back. Oh, and also, you cannot order a sunroof, so that's helpful for headroom, but if you want the outside vistas, just open the windows. Under this hood is a Subaru Flat 4. Ordinarily, that would make me run in the other direction, but right now, this one is tuned to have more power, more torque, and it's so much smoother than before. The old 2.0-liter did not have these same characteristics. It's so much more refined, and look at the numbers. For this type of lightweight car, 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet are very healthy figures. A six-speed manual transmission is standard, and it's very good. Yes, you can get a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters. We'll move on. Fuel economy. Also pretty decent for a four-cylinder car, up in the high 20s. If you drive it normally, you could probably hit 30, but considering that it's not a hybrid, pretty good. The back of the 86 has another refined look, just like the front. These bumper extensions are just slightly longer than before. That gives it just an added dimension of some elegance, because a coupe really should be about that. There's also strength. I like the way the shoulder line is here. And ordinarily, I think spoilers like these are pretty tacky, but they look good here, particularly because it's raised. It's really more Porsche-like than anything else. And my 86 has the optional TRD exhaust. That's why these pipes are a little larger, and they're also louder. Good thing. What good is a sports car on a weekend trip if you can't use the trunk? Just over six cubic feet and more if you fold down the seat. I got this stuff with camera gear right now, but I gotta say, for a long weekend trip, you can go away in an 86. It's snug, it's tight, as it should be. These seats feel good, all the controls are right where you need them, the steering wheel's small. It doesn't feel claustrophobic like the Toyota Supra. That's a very big improvement. The instrument panel might be digital and there's a central screen because it's a modern car, but everything else feels analog. The climate controls, the toggle switches, even the seat heating controls, and of course, the shifter. It's simple inside here because this car is all about driving and nothing more. Subaru designed the infotainment and you can tell because it looks pretty old and dated. The typefaces, just the general interface around here, there's not much going on. But I will say that it's got Sirius XM radio, you can do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and there's some safety features like this. That's it, blind spot and rear cross traffic alert. If you want all the advanced driver assist, you gotta buy a different car. And if you want really good infotainment, you know you're not getting an 86 for that. This digital instrument panel is old, but old in a good way. I kind of like it to old 80s Japanese comics and all the cars that came out at that time. I don't mind seeing these graphics like that, even if it's a little cheesy, because guess what? If you go into track mode, you see a totally different type of display here. And that engine does rev pretty high. You get lap timers, but this is about all you're getting. I like that. At this price, the fit, the finish, and all the material quality is pretty good. Everywhere that your elbows and your hands touch is soft. I like that. And what else is there to say but just to get out here and drive, that's what I'm gonna do. So close that door, let's go. This is just so refreshing. It's refreshing to be away from my desk, outside, well, inside a car. But inside a car that just feels like it's a part of you. 
there's a lot you can detract and say negative things about modern cars, about how they distance themselves from the driver. But not the 86. It's a brand new car you can buy today that feels so direct, so controlled. And the steering is really my favorite part about this car. It's almost tingly in a way. You move the wheel just slightly and you know exactly where those tires are pointed. You feel every part of the contact patch. And nothing's too over boosted or over reactive. It's just neutral. It feels great. This engine is also so much better than before. And I've driven lots of 86, well, it used to be called the Scion FRS and the Subaru BRZ of that previous generation. Also a great car. And if you look at the specs on the screen, it might not seem like this is a completely new car because all the elements before are still intact. But this engine is really a, a new shining star. I really will say that. The extra 400 cc's of displacement in this engine, it makes a difference, particularly with vibration. The old one was good, but you had to wind it up a lot further to get to that max horsepower. So even though you're only getting maybe 20 plus horsepower more, versus the old one, the way it's getting to that peak, it just feels easier. You don't feel like you're straining quite as hard. And I'm just cruising right now just over 3,000 RPM because the gear ratios are pretty short. So if you're going around town, you're gonna to find yourself probably being like in fifth, even at like you know 35 to 40 miles an hour, just to get this thing to calm down. But this engine wants to wind out, it really does. You will get a little bit of the boom, and that's also from the exhaust, being a more open exhaust with that TRD option that we have here. Occasionally, you get that low frequency rumble that doesn't go away. But if you get a different gear, and also it pops a little bit, I like that too. Yeah, it's fun. Because remember, under 3,000 pounds. Without any options, it's like just over 2,800 pounds. That's like, mm, three of these would equal one Hummer EV. Even just an average sports car is easily over 3,400 pounds. That difference is very, very noticeable. So right, there's no turbo, there's nothing else really ultra sophisticated happening with this powertrain. But Toyota and Subaru have gotten the basics right. And that's something that when you step up to higher performance German cars, for example, yeah, they've got a lot of fancy differentials. This has a limited slip, so it still has that. This still has hill hold assist, but it doesn't have all the multiple damping and driving modes that you're gonna find in the more expensive cars. It just doesn't, not at this price. But when you drive an 86, you don't really feel the need for any of that. Because it just brings you back to a time when you just got in your car, you started it, and you weren't pressing all these menus on the screen and, and having a saved button preset for any of the 10,000 different configurations that you can put on a car. It's just get in and you go. A great thing about a car like the 86 that's not too, too powerful is that you feel like you can really max it out safely on a public road and you won't be going triple the speed limit within a few seconds. The zero to 60 Toyota estimates is just over six seconds. I would say it feels quicker than that. And I think it's just the fact that I'm just so low to the ground. The windshield's just directly in front of my face and all that sound. The red line here is just about 7,500 RPM. So you can have a ton of fun without really trying too hard. I love that. Yeah, this car, the steering, the handling, it's excellent. And the track mode, 
has a way that you can essentially drift it a little bit, which I'm not gonna demonstrate right now, but I've done it on a track and it's a ton of fun. God, I love the downshifts too, they feel really good. Just a little bit of pop, not too much, not like the crazy snap, crackle, pop tuner bangs that you hear, that I'm hearing like every day outside my window. That gets really annoying. It doesn't sound good, this one does. As soon as you get right down from speed, you feel like you have all the control in the world. I've been lucky enough in my auto career to have driven so many faster cars, so many more expensive cars. But I can look at this one and just really feel like, yeah, I could drive this every day. I don't really feel like I'm wanting for more. You can always want for more. We're naturally selfish people as car enthusiasts. That's what happens. But you don't really need it in the, in the 86. You just don't. Now, if you want to spend double, you can get a Toyota Supra with that six-cylinder engine making almost 400 horsepower. Watch my review of that car, because yes, it is fantastic. Is it worth the price? Sure. But if you already have a quick family car or even another sports car, getting one of these with roughly half the power, half the price, I don't feel shortchanged. I really do feel like this is one of those cars that's gonna go down in history as something to remember. It may not have the cachet and the prestige of a lot of other cars that are out there, but for something showroom fresh with a factory warranty, available right now, as everyone's switching to EVs, I can get in a Toyota 86 and really feel like I did 20 years ago when I was just starting out learning to drive. This is the car right down to the brakes. You just feel a part of it. You don't feel like there's any complaint at all. Even the clutch take up is nice and easy. For 2023, the Toyota GR86 starts at $28,400. It's pretty well equipped, but we'd recommend the GR86 Premium, which is 31. Now, if you add a few dealer accessories and other factory options like the performance dual exhaust, carpets, and even an air filter on this car, you're looking at 34623 with all fees and destination. Now, I think the GR86 is a great little car. For the money, you're not finding cars in this category at all. You cannot find another rear wheel drive sports car powered by gas that's as good as this. Under 30K to start, this one is just over 30 with options. So what else are you gonna choose? Maybe a Subaru BRZ or a Mazda Miata. That's pretty much it if you want a brand new car. It's lightweight, it's fun, and it is a very, I would say, a teachable car. If someone is new to manual transmissions or to just sports cars in general, this is a masterclass. Think of it like that. It has all the fundamentals and the elements are just perfect. So what do you think? Do you want more sports cars? Because I do. We're gonna have more on the Car Gurus YouTube channel, more reviews at cargurus.com, so subscribe and we'll see you next time.